We're talking trapping here with the Department of Natural Resources and Environment. We've got Conservation Officer Brad Brewer with us, and um, we're going to try to give a few tips and hints of what you can do and some of the different types of traps that you can utilize. And, and Brad, trapping has been around, I want to say, since the beginning of time almost, hasn't it? It seems like it, yeah. <laughs> since the beginning, of the founding of this country at least, yeah. Now, let's talk about some of the ways that people can trap. What type of a trap do you have right here? This is a, a, a conibear or a body gripping trap. It's, um, it's a kill type trap that, that kills the animal immediately. All right, and that's the same type of a trap that this is, uh, just a, a larger size. Yep, larger for, for beaver or otter. Yep. Okay, and when you're setting something like this up, um, give me some um, you know, kind of keys to setting it up. Would I set it up right in a trail, just off a trail? Where would I set it up at? Well, first of all, um, you've got to be cognizant of the the legal um, aspects of it and you and most of these traps have common names like 110 220 or 330 but the, the key is to measure the inside of, of this jaw spread mm -hmm. um, because based on that measurement is gonna there's gonna be some restrictions on where and how you can set it um, this trap here is a 160 and it can be set on dry land um, uh, without any restrictions other than the height. Okay. okay. It can't be any higher than uh, eight inches off the ground at the top of the trap. But this trap would be used for uh, raccoons, for example. Um, you'd set it right in a trail, an obvious runway that they're running through, and, and get them as they're, they're moving down that trail. And this is a kill type trap, lights out Correct. when they're in it. it. Lights out when they're in it. Um, it, th that's why there are, there are restrictions and regulations on how you set these because if you do um, set these in uh, improperly, you could catch a non-target species um, or even a domestic uh, animal, dog or cat. Mm. Okay. Now, uh, we've got another trap down here below us. And, and I have to say careful because why? It is all set and ready to go. This isn't is it? all set and ready to go. Yep, this, this is a, a foothold trap, number three, double coil spring foothold trap. Um, it could be used for a fox um, or if set properly for beaver. Mm -hmm. uh, now a trap like this, I would assume that we're going to, uh, you know, use some bait uh, to bring the animal in that we're looking to trap. Uh, yep, you could. Um, for for coyote, you could use bait or lure. Okay. And for uh, a beaver, you can. There's various ways of setting it, but um, a common one is like on a caster mound or or something similar to that. Now, when we talk about trapping, there's different uh, regulations. Um, I know we can go to the, you know, the hunting and trapping guide, and that'll give you everything you need to know. But, but real quick, what are some of the main regulations that somebody would need to know? Uh, well, for starters, um, tags. Uh, you've got to have your, your traps tagged whenever you're um, in an area frequented by wildlife. Um, so pretty much any time that you're out in the field setting or, or removing traps, you got to have them tagged. Uh, for the for the conibears bears here, um, the, like I said earlier, the key is this measurement here. Uh, anything that's that's less than five and a half inches uh, across this jaw spread can be set pretty much without restriction. Okay, but once you start getting into the bigger traps, uh, you've got to be careful where you set them and how you set them. Uh, anything like your 220s have to be set um, if they're on dry land in a box um, with with some requirements which are outlined in the hunting and trapping guide mm -hmm. and then these 330s uh, have to be set um, in the water or four or more feet off the ground if you're going to set them on dry land. Obviously if you're on private land uh, get permission from the landowner if you don't own it um, and uh, real quick uh, any restrictions on public land? Well those restrictions that I just gave you are, are for public land. Okay. Okay so um, if you if you uh, if you abide by those, uh, you should be good to go. Right. And um, obviously, like you just said, uh, the permission is key. That's a, that's a big one that uh, seems to draw a lot of attention from us. So. All right, make sure they're tagged. Make sure you have permission. Make sure you uh, set them the right way. And uh, make sure you don't lose a finger or a hand when you're out there setting these that's traps right. because right. they can go off. All right? Brad, thanks for being with us. Yep. All right, Conservation Officer Brad Brewer, part of our DNRE, Education and Informational Segments from the Department of Natural Resources and Environment. You're watching the Q1 Buck Poll.